Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Rodney, and I'm back, and I wanted to go ahead and give my review on Married to Medicine. Now, listen, I only watched this episode once, okay? Um, I have other things that I have in the works that I want to watch, and I really just need to kind of, like, stay on the schedule um, that I have laid out. Um, so I'm hoping I, you know, caught the important parts. Um, listen, we're just going to talk about <laughs> not any necessarily in any particular order, but we're just going to talk about some things that I think need to be said. Listen, girl, I ain't trying to make nobody mad. Listen, I ain't trying to make nobody mad in this review, but I think that there are some things that need to be said and it's going to be what it's going to be. All right. We'll start off with a little light, light, you know, nothing too heavy. Okay. Um, Kieran and Anila and the whole costume, uh, the idea for them to dress up as movers for Halloween. What it comes down to is for whatever reason, Dr. Kieran is still trying to convince or get Dr. Eugene to see that it was funny. You know how I always say Whose measuring stick are we using when we determine if shade is light or, you know, you know how like when we hear people say things like, oh, that was just light shade. Oh, girl, it wasn't that it wasn't that deep. But whose measuring stick are we using? Because if someone throws shade to me. I'm using my measuring stick to determine how light or heavy the shade is. I'm not using yours. So in this case, with Dr. Eugene and Dr. Karen, Dr. Karen, you can't tell Dr. Eugene what's funny and what's not funny. He's telling you that it was not funny to him, so therefore it was not funny. Now, it could be funny to you, but I also think out of respect for, I guess, the potential friendship that they may have or the friendship that they're building, Karen needs to get off of the, it was funny, it was funny. Just think about it. It was funny. No, it wasn't funny. Because if we start making jokes about your home getting broken into twice within three months or however many times it was in the time frame, then that will probably be a sensitive situation for you, right? So I'm just saying, I just want Dr. Karen to hush. Just hush. It wasn't funny to Dr. Eugene and Toya, and that's just what it comes down to to me. And stop trying to convince him that it was funny. I think... The consensus was at the time that everybody thought it was funny, just like Cecil thought it was funny. But once he realized that it wasn't funny to Dr. Eugene, it was kind of like, oh, okay, y'all, it's not funny. He not he not laughing. That's how it usually goes, right? You may you may see you may laugh at something that happened to someone in the friend group, but once you see that that person is not laughing, it's kind of like, oh. <laughs> right like oh girl i'm sorry girl i thought it was funny but i'm sorry girl i, I didn't mean to laugh or <laughs> knowing you meant to laugh but it's kind of like okay girl i'm sorry but you stop laughing though right um eugene um dr eugene basically says that um you know when i can't you i'm so scared to say the word you know when everything was going on that happened in 2020 um when i had just not 2020 but i guess it pretty much started i guess in 2020 however you want to say it girl y'all know what i'm talking about when the world shut down pretty much um he said that he was i guess over two er's and because he has so much going on at work he basically kind of removed himself from the family okay so listen I think that would be I, I, the reason why I, I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> okay. So I feel like Toya has every right to feel the way that she feels, right? Because it's like, even though you are out here and you took an oath to save these people, you know, their lives and their loved ones and all that good stuff. Like, you still have a family back at home. But I just, I also feel like 
on the flip side, like nobody is a robot. You see what I'm saying? Like nobody is a robot. And I could see how with Dr. Eugene being like in the emergency room and seeing all types of stuff in death on top of death on top of death, how his soul was probably just sucked out of him. And by the time he got home, he really didn't give anything to give his family. It's like, I'm trying to see both sides. I understand that Toy was in a situation where it's kind of like, girl, you have a family, you have a family. But also, Dr. Eugene has to go to work because, I mean, girl, he has to provide for the family. I mean, I know Toya has a nice little income, not little, but I'm sure, you know, Toya has a nice income with her being an OG on Married to Medicine coming in from Bravo. But what I'm saying is, you know, Eugene has to work in, I don't know, girl, I, 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 I don't know, girl. I just feel like, you know, Dr. Eugene was doing the best he could do at the time. You know, I could, you know, I still want to acknowledge, you know, Toya's feelings and how she probably felt at the time too, you know? Let's move on. Um, the the largest clients of Botox, um, Dr. Heron says, is actually black men. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I ain't going to lie. I ain't going to lie. I ain't going to lie. I said, well, girl, that's because you live in Atlanta, girl, and all the girls, <laughs> you're all the girls, all the girls is coming to go get their shots, okay? I need one right here, right here, right here, and right here, okay? And you want to put some right here and right here, girl, whatever shots and fillers they getting down there but he says that um it's mostly black men and then i was like you know what it's probably not just gay men because plastic when it comes to plastic surgery botox fill and stuff like that even with, with plastic surgery black men still don't want to admit that they be laying on the table getting filleted and cut open girl it took it, it took kanye to girl be on tmz telling all his business for him to tell us that he got a look that he got a look that he got a little slice and dice you know what i'm saying look at drake now we don't know but girl we all think drake then got a look you know a little a look cut cut here and there right these men they're getting cut open and i don't think it's just gay men i think these men are also getting botox it's just not gay men it's just that it's something that that black men don't discuss, okay? But I think it, it, it might be a nice chunk of gay men getting it because they do live in Atlanta. But I also think it's a nice look, you know, a nice look chunk of straight men getting it too. They're just not vocal about the work that they get done. Scott, I put Scott as a mess. <laughs> Girl, I put Scott as a mess. And then I put something about, I guess he was, they were talking about last year when he was engaging, I guess, in, in DMs. He got up and sung the song, and this is exactly what I did. And fast forward, okay? I don't want to see that mess. Because I don't know what that song was about. I don't know what he, I don't know what the word, I literally fast forward through it. Girl, okay. Um, who has the longest leash? Cecil. I mean, it make, I mean, girl. <laughs> It makes sense, you know. <laughs> oh, I forgot that they also mentioned before we get into that. Curtis, they brought they mentioned they brought up Eugene basically making a joke about Curtis and his infidelity. Huh. Y'all know I do not see it for Curtis at all. You talking about baby number one on my hit list, <laughs> girl? Y'all thought I don't too much care for Portia and Phaedra, baby. That Curtis baby makes my asshole itch and my skin crawl. Which I do. Oh, girl, I was about to go off into a whole rant. Girl, bring it back. Girl, bring it back. Bring it back. Bring it back. Girl, don't go off into no rant. Don't go off into no rant. Okay, so Curtis basically felt, you know, I guess was using an example of. I think Curtis was using an example of Eugene making a joke out of a sensitive situation. Now, I'm going to try to take the fact that I don't like Curtis out of it and try to be fair. It makes sense. It makes sense. It does. Because if Eugene can be upset about something 
as really not that deep about moving, right? And, you know, Toya say y'all flipping houses and making money and all that. Then why couldn't you understand, even though Curtis chose to go take his penis and stick it into another woman's vagina, right? How can you not understand you making jokes about that situation that Dr. Jackie was going through with her philandering husband, how that could not be considered like a very sensitive situation. And that's that's something that's not funny. You see what I'm saying? So it pains me to say it, okay? But I feel like Curtis was right. Ooh, I <laughs> Girl, I almost threw up. Ooh, see, I try to be fair. <laughs> I try to be fair. I try to be fair, okay? Um, Cecil has the longest, not Cecil, who has the longest leash? I think they said Cecil, but they then I think I think least Cecil said Curtis. And it made sense because you know, Curtis is retired, so he ain't got nothing to do, right? He just like Toya. Maybe him and Toya should be homegirls or homeboys. You know what I'm saying? I mean, didn't Toya sit on his lap one time? I don't know. Let me shut up so I didn't mess it. Um but yeah, Jack, you know, Jackie is at work all day. Her schedule just changed to, you know, her getting off at 2.30. So the leash is probably going to be shortened just a little bit. But for the most part, you know, I will say this much, girl. For, for Curtis to have cheated on Jackie, you know, Jackie hasn't really given any signs of, girl, kind of like, girl, I forgave and I forgot. And, girl, we're moving on with our marriage. So I don't know, girl. Basically, who would be open to be like an a poly relationship or an open relationship? Um, those are not Andy's exact words, but I, that's pretty much what he was getting to. Um, they pretty much all say no. I think they made a joke about like a man being involved. And of course, because most people think that girl, if a man is involved, it's considered a train if it's anything sexual, right? Um, but two women and a man is just considered a threesome. But that's just the way. Let me. Can I say something, y'all? I want everybody to just take what I'm about to say. Let's just think about it. Whenever you and I'm not, I'm not going to spend too much time on this. But whenever you hear people say that a train, it's a train when it's two men and a woman, but it, you know, but it's a threesome when it's um, two women and a man. That's just a way for society, men and women, to make women feel guilty and make women feel like a hoe for basically engaging in something that could be satisfying to her. Because the whole purpose is to satisfy this nigga. So how dare you engage in something that at the end of the day, because the truth of the matter is if you're a straight woman, girl, you wouldn't mind getting dicked down by two big dick niggas. But the the fear of people finding out and calling you a hoe is what holds a lot of people back, right? Now, you don't care if people find out you ate pussy over the weekend. <laughs> you don't mind going to work with Keisha, Coochie Juice, girl, still sitting on the top of your lip Monday morning at your cubicle, right? <laughs> Anyways, let me go on, girl. I was about to go. Let me shut up. Okay. Do what y'all want to do. Y'all grown. <laughs> um, Toya. Listen, we're just going to talk. We're just going to talk. I'm about to say some stuff, and some of y'all are really about to get pissed off at me, and I don't know, uh, know any other way to say this. I hear a lot of people say that single people shouldn't speak on married folks' business. Well, I would say in return that married folk shouldn't speak on single folks business because while Eugene and Toy want to sit their asses on stage and call quad miserable, there's only one person on that stage in a 15 year marriage who says that she's lonely and it damn sure ain't quad. I could literally go around that whole goddamn room and talk about everybody's marriages. And I can guarantee you, it's quite probably going to seem like the happiest. Let's just go and talk about it since we since we already here. You got Toya 
crying, talking about she's lonely in her marriage, but Quad is miserable. Girl, what? You got Contessa and Scott. Last year, Contessa was using words like volatile to describe her marriage. You got Dr. Jackie and Curtis, who didn't even have enough respect for his goddamn wife, who's on a popular hit TV show on Bravo to keep his dirty dick in his pants, or at least not take that trifling helper to the busiest airport in the world. Okay, let's move on. You got Simone and Cecil, who I absolutely adore and love. But a girl, if it wasn't for them, if it was if it wasn't for their friends at the reunion of a few years ago peer pressuring them to stay in their marriage, girl, Simone would have been at the goddamn courthouse on Monday filing divorce papers. <laughs> then you got Heavenly and Damon, who won't even let her man talk. <laughs> girl, what? And we don't really know enough about Karen and uh, Anila quite yet, right? So I'm sick and tired of the people on Twitter, online, trying to throw in Quad's face that, oh, she ain't got no man. She wish she had a man. She single. Why she on the show? Bitch, Quad has just kept the married people shouldn't even be on the motherfucking show. And if you really be honest about it, girl, Quad really shouldn't be the only single woman on the stage. Now, catch that shit. Eugene and Toya getting into it with Quad or Quad getting into it with Eugene and Toya. I don't follow Toya, Eugene, or Quad on Twitter. But we know Twitter is my new thing, right? I hear people saying on Twitter that Eugene makes slick comments, kind of like he made a slick comment about Curtis, right? About Quad and then Quad responds. Or he makes a little comments on the show. We saw, you know, Eugene in the confessional. Uh, and I don't know if it was a confessional, but it was this season. Um, basically, you know, making jokes about Quad being single in that big ass house by herself. Here go a Snuggie. That was a jab when they gave her that shirt and they had divorced on the shirt. They could have put any other word. Determination, girl, delightful, delicious, whatever. But they put divorced. That was a shot at Quad. Y'all know I love Dr. Eugene, but we're not going to sit here and act like Dr. Eugene ain't slightly messy and he don't be in the shit because Dr. Eugene be in the shit. Here we go with the measuring stick that we're using to determine what shade, whose shade is the strongest. Dr. Eugene says that quad jokes are worse than Toya's. But of course he's gonna say that because Toya is his wife. He's not gonna go against Toya. And I'm not saying he should, but he's not gonna go, he's not gonna go against Toya. Toya says, no, I'm sorry, Quad said something about Eugene said so and so. And then Toya said, well, you countered with, so basically acknowledging that Eugene said something, but because you said something worse than what he said, that's why we own this. Eugene says, why do you have a problem with us? Qua says, I don't have a problem with you. Eugene says something like, well, Lee, well, make, stop talking about us. And then she said, well, shut your mouth about me. If you don't have, if you don't have a problem with Eugene's tone, then you shouldn't have a problem with the quads. Because from what I saw, Eugene Quad was matching Eugene's energy, period. And I'm going to go ahead and say this. I know a lot of y'all don't probably watch Heavenly's Lives, and y'all know Heavenly is my girl. But Toya and Eugene, that was some misdirected anger. Ain't no goddamn way you done sit your ass on that stage and try to go back and forth with Quad when the woman that's sitting beside you literally called Eugene one season the definition of a big-ass bitch. 
But Toya want to be upset because Quad called him Eugina. We can play this game all day long. I would rather have somebody call me Eugina than somebody call me your husband is literally the definition of a big ass bitch. Heavenly drags Toya every week. Now, I have not seen Heavenly's lives about marriage to medicine in probably over a month, probably a month and a half. So it's been a minute. The last review I remember listening to Heavenly was when I had went to um, the beach with my family and I was coming back into Houston and it was the episode, it was the review where I guess Toya was on Watch What Happens Live saying that she makes more money than Eugene and Heavenly was like, oh, Toy, I know she ain't that dumb. Like, Toy, no, Toy, no, she didn't say that. Like, literally, Heavenly used to drag the dog shit out of Toya. And see, this is what happens on these shows, right? The women get into it and, un, you know, it's unfair to the men. Sometimes the men get caught in the crossfire, right? Like, for example, Quad is taking a shot at Toya in the confessional, right? Oh, Toya, some, 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 you, Toya already in a, Toya probably already in an open relationship. Eugene just don't know about it. Eugene gonna feel some type of way, right? When Heavenly is talking about Toya's finances and her moving every other week, Eugene gonna feel some type of way because Technic not technically, but Eugene is like the one who brings, I mean, Toya get paid from the show, but you know, Eugene is the one, like the husband, I guess the head of house. So if they have those roles, I don't know. In the house, so Eugene is going to naturally feel some type of way. So I'm confused on why they got so much smoke for Quad, but y'all ain't got shit for Contessa or Heavenly. So the only thing that I can wrap my mind around is, oh, it's because Quad ain't got no man behind her. Because if we're going to keep it on like Toya said, just address me, woman to woman, don't address my husband. Well, that should be across the board. Because Heavenly has already said out of her mouth that Dr. Eugene has gotten in contact with Dr. Damon about Heavenly in her mouth on YouTube. So out of respect, I guess, for the fact that there's another man in the picture I'm going to go to this man and let him know that his, you know, I have a problem with what your wife is saying. But since Quad doesn't have a man, then you should just leave it to your wife to handle this woman. Right? Right? So Eugene shouldn't even be addressing Quad. But the thing is, Eugene does take digs at Quad. And then when Quad comes back and says something that's Worse, worse er than Eugene. Now Eugene, his feelings are hurt. Now it's oh, your jokes are worse than Toya. Now it's why are you talking about me and my family? Eugene, you take slick comments at Quad. Then Quad come back and your feelings hurt. And now you arguing with her back on stage. Well, you should have just let Toya handle Quad. Quad is this camp. I'm sorry. I was with Quad. I was with Quad. And if you go back to season one, Quad is just kept, none of them sorry for Quad. They all thought Quad was some ghetto hood rat, bi hood rat bitch from Tennessee. Let's just call it a thing a thing. None of them sorry for Quad. <laughs> Quad is miserable. Toya, girl, you crying talking about you lonely in your marriage. You're like, girl, in real life, again, don't nobody in that stage got room to talk about no fucking body. I would take Quad's life over any one of their lives. Quad appears the happiest, okay? Now, anyways. Just like Quad, y'all really think Quad couldn't have a man if she... Girl, y'all really think that Quad couldn't go get a man if she wanted a man? As much as these niggas, girl, these niggas ain't choice or picky anyways. You think Quad couldn't have a man by now? Like in real life. 
Toya. Toya dogs out, Eugene. It ain't, it ain't nobody watching this show that has walked away from Married to Medicine not cringing at the shit that Toya says about her husband. Not one person. Even me. And y'all know I be on these niggas' asses. But y'all know I got y'all know I like Dr. Eugene too. But even me, I'm like, damn, Toya. Because it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing to get on TV and talk about your husband's penis. And, you know, sex drive or the sex is lame. You get the lame sex. Just like Heavenly was telling her, girl, let it, like, we're not telling her, but saying under her breath, let it go, bitch. Just let it go. Because, girl, you're just digging yourself into a deeper grave. Because nothing you're saying is making sense. Girl, you embarrass your husband all the time. You don't know when to hush. Then Eugene literally has to come and act like he's not bothered, even though he is. And, and when Quad said, Eugene will laugh it off but hurt on the inside, Toya says that's exactly what he did. But then, of course, Eugene says, y'all think I'm at the house getting spanked when I'm very vocal. Well, girl, I can't tell because Toya, cause Toya just said that, girl, you be at the house smiling, but girl... <laughs> I'm done. I'm done with Eugene Toya and um and um Qua. I think Qua was eating their asses up. I'm glad that Qua was matching uh, was matching uh, Doctor Eugene's energy. If you're gonna yell at me, I'm yelling back. I don't say shit to you. You don't say shit to me. Don't come to Qua talking about what you counter with. Well, girl, if you wouldn't have said nothing, hush. You wouldn't have said nothing. like I just don't see Qua just going after Doctor Eugene. Dr. Eugene, more than likely, has been saying shady shit about Quad, and then Quad returns the favor. And now it's an issue. Just like Cecil. When Cecil wanted to repeat what Mariah said about, oh, go pressure wash your house. Girl, stay out of it. Now, Heavenly is into Cecil's ass. You see what I'm saying? Couldn't tell, so I'm getting tired of this review already. I done gave myself a headache. Contessa, um, Contessa, I, I didn't get where Contessa was coming from. I didn't know, I didn't know if Contessa was trying to say that Dr. Damon should have been the one to try to set up some type of, I was about to say meet and greet. I don't know, girl. Contessa, girl, you, it's hard. To have contestants, it's hard to have anybody's side when Dr. Damon is in the picture because Dr. Damon is a very soft spoken, um, just person. Just like he said, you know, I don't really come around because basically I know y'all asses is ghetto. I know y'all loud. I don't yell. I don't go back and forth with women. And I know I speak slowly, but I like to think before I speak. So it's hard for me to have a conversation because you got Contessa on the other side of the table doing all of this. So therefore, I'm just not going to engage. I'm just not going to say nothing. Now, if it's a man on the other hand, on the other end, on the other end, then girl, we can go back and forth and tongue tussle all day. He ain't say tongue tussle, but he was pretty much saying, "Nigga, it is what it is. We got to fight, cuss each other out. It's going to be what it's going to be." But I'm not. I'm not about to do that with a woman back and forth. A part of me feels like. I could be reaching on this. A part of me feels like Contessa was trying to pick a fight with Damon to see if she could try to bring him out of character. I really felt that way. Like, what is Contessa doing? Like, the truth of the matter is, and I do believe this, I don't believe, I don't believe Damon watches a show like that does he probably tune in once a once a girl once every blue moon probably so but i don't think that could, i don't even think damon runs his social media i think heavily runs his social media like i don't think that damon is as involved as some people think that he is i really 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 don't so it's like even when contest was talking about getting together and this and that like why would you even think that damon would do something like that because damon don't even really Fool with nobody like that in the group, except for the men. And there's clearly this, I guess, you know, and I, I understand it. You know, there's clearly this, you know, I don't, basically, I'm not going to, if something is going on, I'm going to get in contact with the man. 
if if I want to set a get together, I'm gonna get in contact with the man, or I'm gonna get in contact with the woman. Like the, basically, the women communicate with the women, and the men communicate with the men. I understand it is what it is, right? Contessa just look like I don't know. Contessa, I don't know, girl. We're gonna leave Contessa alone. Um, um, Scott says that you know he was bothered because Heavenly kicked me while I was down. I want to know when did the philandering dirty dick niggas who throw dick around and talk to their wives crazy and walk through airports and girl have whores and tramps on their arms and girl show pictures on TV of women in their phone? When did these niggas become the victim? Curtis, Scott, you're not the victim. No, you're not. Contessa said, I'm going to use my platform like Heavenly. Girl, we already talked about Heavenly and Contessa. I don't feel like talking about that anymore, girl. Contessa can do, I mean, it makes sense. I'm not going to lie. It makes sense. It makes sense. If, if, if Heavenly can get on YouTube and use her platform the way that she see fits, then, girl, quiet as it's kept, Contessa can get on YouTube, I mean, on Bravo, and use her platform the way she sees fit. This is the way she sees fit. Is that how you say it? Y'all know what I'm trying to say, shit. I mean, it's fair. It's, it's, it's only fair. It's only fair. Um, Quad was asking Damon a question. Heavenly starts going off. This is what I think Heavenly doesn't want to happen. I think the reason, I think, this is what I think. I think the reason why Heavenly didn't want Quad to engage with Damon, because then, because I don't think Damon really pays attention to the show. I think, I think Damon knows his wife. I think he knows Heavenly can be a hothead. And I think she, he knows that Heavenly can curse and do all that extra and all that carrying on. Girl, he know that lady. They've been married for girl a long time. So he know that lady. But I don't know if Heavenly, I don't know if he knows the ins and outs of the show and how Heavenly may really, 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 really be down a bro, Bravo cutting up and acting a fool and the shit that she actually does say on her YouTube. Like, I feel like Heavenly has probably downplayed the things that she has said on her YouTube channel, right? And I think that with Quad having a conversation with Dr. Damon, then that that lid would have started coming off. And that's why Heavenly was like, don't talk to him. Leave it alone. Be quiet. Because I think she's trying. I think that Heavenly has downplayed what she's probably said on YouTube to Dr. Damon. That's what I think. Um, if you the, the smartest thing, the, not the smartest thing, one of the things that really stuck out to me was if you forgive someone, you gotta let it go. That's what Simone said. I said, I know that's right, Simone. Quad was dancing with one of the strippers or whoever it was. I thought that was really, 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 really cute. I thought that Quad's reunion look was probably one of the best reunion looks, period, across the board. Like Real Housewives, Married to Medicine, whatever. I think it was top, top, top. Everything about Quad's look was like together from head to toe. Um, Andy, when Quad was dancing, Andy was looking like he, girl, I want to dance with one of them niggas. Um, you know, they say Andy, they say Andy love BBC. I don't know how true that is, girl, allegedly. Um, that was pretty much it, girl. I'm done. I'm sorry. I was seeing quiet on this one. Quad was eating Eugene and Toya ass up. Eugene and Toya have misdirected anger because if y'all gonna let Contessa slide from calling you the definition of a big ass bitch or not address her publicly, then don't address Quad publicly. She called you Eugenia. Then Toya's time, you called him a bitch. No, I didn't call him a bitch. What I would have said, I didn't call him a bitch. Your BFF called him a bitch. You don't remember when he called him the definition of a big ass bitch and you walked away? I'm not the one who dragging Quad. I'm not the one who dragging Eugene. If you want to be true about it, I'm sorry, sister, but Dr. Hamley, my homegirl, she be dragging y'all asses on YouTube. That ain't me. The shit I be doing is light, 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 light work compared to these two helpers. <laughs> okay? <laughs> and that's just what it is. All right, y'all, I'm gone. I'm about to have me a cocktail. I'll talk to y'all tomorrow. Bye. One little last thing. For everybody out there who wants to push this, this whole whatever you want to call it, 
uh, you know, if someone is single, especially like with women, you know, because I see this a lot on Twitter in the comment sections. Oh, Quad is single. Quad is that like, Quad was married. Quad was married. She was in a toxic, fucked up relationship, just like half of the people that are sitting on that stage with her. She was the only one who had enough pussy lips to girl throw in the towel. I mean, girl, quiet as this kept. If I was with her fighting my husband getting pulled by, pulled by my hair and having to pull out butcher knives, girl, I would have threw in the towel too. Oh, y'all forgot about that, huh? Y'all forgot about how when Quad and Dr. G was over there, girl, fighting like that was Ike and Tina in the limousine. Y'all forgot about that? I ain't forgot about it. If Quad want to be married, Quad to be married. Being married, being in a relationship, having a man does not equate to happiness. Toya can contest to that. Jackie can tell you that. Contessa can tell you that. Simone can tell you that. Then Simone referred to Cecil one season as Dr. Jekyll, or like Dr. Jekyll and, Miss, and, and Mr. Hyde, Mrs. Hyde. He's one person when the camera goes off. Another person when the camera is on. Y'all don't remember that? Oh. Oh, okay. Every time Cecil even, ha even, every time Dr. Eugene, Dr. Damon even has a conversation with a woman, girl, white, black, fat, skinny, heavenly is girl breaking her neck. What, what's she doing? What's she doing? But y'all have the nerve to get online and try to act and try to act like quad can't be happy and single. Quad is probably more happy than a lot of married couples. Y'all ain't never thought about that? Y'all ain't never thought about, girl, that, that there are people on that stage that actually might be envious of Quad? Y'all ain't never thought about that? Oh, because Quad ain't got no man standing behind her. So she has to be, she has to be jealous of Toya. She has to be miserable. Girl, what? <laughs> Anyways, I'm gone. I'll talk to y'all later.